I could have sat here, believe it or not, on a match lake, a pretty new match, circular lake with an island in the middle there, relative new at Pondwood, Pondwood Fishery, which I have done a catfish one at before. This is not catfish, this is just match fishing. <clears throat> and they've got a big long stretch they call the snake as well, which is way over the back there, it's a long snaky bit. Look at the river, it looks very much like a river. But you can see here, very, very narrow. Each peg, it's been really well built pegs actually, look at those big carp waters, you know, when they have those great big pegs there you put your bivy on. Very, very shallow, or seems to me very shallow. Nicely, you know, landscape around the edges. They're numbered, but there's also, just show you, across there, so if this is my peg that I've drawn in a match, I can only fish up to that piece of string there and that piece of string there. There's a slight curve on here, so I just guessed what mine looks like, peg 15. So it goes all the way around here as well. So there's an island all the way around. So there's a lake all the way, a channel, I'm going to call it, all the way around here. I'm just going to rock up and catch what I catch. And I'm going to try and give it at least two hours. Now, matches are, I think, sort of three hours or five hours. So just see if I can get some fish. Obviously, I've never fished it before. I've just plumbed it up and it's really shallow. Seems to me very shallow. We'll see if we can get some fish going. I've got all I've got, supermarket baits, guys. Lunch of meat, which I'll probably say for the catfish lake in fairness. Sweet corn and bread. Right, I'm set up like this. I've got, now this is going to sound really cool coming from me. I've got my, <laughs> it's just my fishing wheel, guys. It's just my fishing wheel. But I know some of the tackle carts out there love this. This is the Shimano Aero Perfection 3500MW. It's got two ball bearings. Yeah, <laughs> so have I. Anyway, match rod as well. This is my match rod. Called a, well, I'd say the mate. It's a techno match, but it's super tip. It's very fast. <clears throat> it's 13 feet long. And um, I'm fishing with the Waggler float here, which is probably way too big for tiny little water like this. But, you know, I'm sure somewhere I'm going to get a fish out of here. Fingers crossed anyway. So I aim to be fishing on the bottom. You can't use floating baits here. They're stocked with what they call F1s, you know, the smaller size carp for match fishermen. A few fish, I've walked right around, there's a few fish bubbling, but I've had a bit of a nightmare. <clears throat> That's why my throat's croaky. My flask top's come undone and it's emptied entire, the entire contents all over my food bag. So it's soggy sandwiches and worse, <clears throat> excuse me, no water. So we'll see how long the throat lasts. Let's see how long I last, actually. Let's get some bait out. All right, <clears throat> got some sweet corn that's well, it's sort of thawing out. I'm just going to chuck three little swims in here. Bang, and there. One in the middle, and there's a patch of weed over there. I want to go just on the corner there. I've got a little bit of bread. I'm going to probably sop up, and I've also got some pellets, so I don't know in these in these match waters, you know. There's <laughs> even flies in here, there's blue bottles. Oh, God, I love it. I wonder if you throw them in if a fish will take it. I've got some pellets here as well, look. Chuck a few pellets in. Coarse pellets. And then basically see if any bubbles come up. Right. Single grain of sweet corn on the hook. I must leave some of these out to thaw out because that's all I'm going to need for hook bait. It's a little pinch of pinch of bait. As a fish moves over there. So my depth is it's peculiar. What I've got on there about a size 12 or something like that. I've got maybe a size 12 on there. I just repaired this match. Well, I'll tell you what I have got, guys. Watch out for these. On the top sections here, they have a single leg ring here. Let's see it whipped off. It springs. They're very, very easy to snag on and catch. And I've already snapped some of these over the years. I've snapped some recently. So I've whipped on a three leg support ring there. Just a single coat of varnish. That's all it takes. I've tarted it up. And the same on that one. They put it on the bottom section down towards here, strong ones, but for the tip, you know, they put it, uh, they very, very light rings, which I, I've got to be honest, I don't like. They're just too light. I suppose they don't want you catching big fish on them, that's what it is. Single grain of corn. Oh yeah, we're going to get a bit noisy, we've got planes coming over as well. I'm just going to lower that down there. 
Now I've gone five pounds straight through because it says no hook lengths. I don't quite know what that means, no hook lengths. So I guess if you're a matchman, you can't use hooks and nylon, I don't know. Right, I'll tell you what I have seen, guys. It must be shallow because I can see some mud coming up down there. So I figure where I put that corn. There is some fish. Oh, there's a swell just there. <clears throat> now, I don't know what size the small fish go in here. Obviously, if I had maggots, it would probably be that much better. Don't get me wrong, I can see the principle of it is that you want everybody, well, I mean, I quite know how you'd fish around there anyway if there's a guy next to you, but that's your designated area. You can only catch fish in front of you. That guy goes from that piece of string, well, really close, just a piece of string over there, to number 15 to 14. Um, so it's trying to get the effect of everybody is in equal opportunities of catching fish. Of course, it depends what fish are in front of you, even if you, well, I suppose they're trying to even the pegs out. There's a bite. They're trying to even the pegs out is what they're doing. And what I'm going to do is, is bounce between here, close in here, and over there by those, you know, I'm going to bounce between three swims. Very, very close down here. And what I'm doing is looking for bubbles. Out there, which I'm going to call that the main area, and over by the edge of that weed. Who knows where the, as a bite, as a bite, as a bite. I'm just rest, I've got a front rest there and I'm just resting the, just on the edge of the, there's a bubble coming up out there now, so it's tiny fish, I guess they're like this, I don't know what they are, just moving there. It's amazing how cold this sweet corn is, I'm trying to get it thawed out as much as I can because it's soft then. I guess if I was in a match, I would expect to have had a fish by now, even though it's literally five minutes. Maggots would probably undoubtedly have given me more of a chance of small fish. I could get three or four carp out. I would be quite happy. There we go, first fish on close in in the margins. This is why I got this nice tippy rod. It looks like a small one for sure. Ooh. See, if you've got a load of small fish in here, you don't know exactly what they're going to eat, what they're going to be eating, how fast they're going to be getting through your bait. It's just a small one there. I guess this is like a small F1 there. So back, I'm going to stick with that single grain of sweet corn. Now that was close in, maybe I should try over on there. Let's just try by the side of the weed there. Oh no, I forgot the hand wipe bag. Brilliant. There's always something. Oh, I missed that one. Had a bite straight away there. Now a tip from our uh, silver fish specialist did say, if you don't have a bite, just give it a little tweak or a little bump. Sometimes that does induce them to take and then let it sit there. You're just bumping that bait a little bit. If they're digging around there, it might attract their attention. And they, oh man, he was right. He was right, was he not? He was absolutely bang on. I just bumped that float and we have Another one of those small F1s on. I mean, I know they do that, but there you go. I can't say any more than that worked totally. There we go. A match-sized carp. A match-sized carp, and he didn't seem bothered, did he, by the size of that float. And that's quite a big float for this size water. So, that's one fish from here, one fish from... There, I haven't had one out in the middle yet. So having caught that fish from that swim, I made a bit of a sort of noise in that swim as it were. 
I can bounce between them. So that film can settle down. Maybe put half a dozen grains out, that's all. Two or three in that one. A few out in that one. So you can see I'm not really casting, I'm just doing like the match, just swing it out. And normally with a waggly, you'd be casting beyond the swim and winding down low, sinking the line below the surface. But I don't think, okay, one by the bank over there. Here he goes, here he goes, here he goes. We're on. Well, you can't say he's not fishing here, boys. I've only just turned up and catching them. And that is a bend in this rod with a carp on it. Oh my goodness me. And he's small, look, they're all small, they're match carp, guys. They're fun fish. I mean, if you had a youngster that wanted to learn to fish, maybe a place like this. Now look what I've got in here, I'll just show you. I put my mat down there as well. No, I didn't catch some bread. I put some bread in there to soak up because I didn't bring any ground bait. And I can leave the rest, watch this. You can bring this out. Just like that, and just let it sit. Well, nothing out in that distance swim. We're going to come back in the inside here. I'm just going to try it around the corner. In a minute I'm going to try a piece of bread flake, pinch it on the hook so it sinks. Uh, if we catch on corn, no problems. Oh, <laughs> I, think I, I think I had a fish. Do you know what, I'm going to have to re-plumb this. I actually think this is shallower than I've plumbed it. So I'm on the right hand side now. Just leave that one little bump. Nothing there yet. I see fish moving around the marginal bank round there. Marginal, that's no more than about one and a half lengths across the other side. I'm just doing what that matchman said and it worked. Look at that people, goodness me. Oh, what's different, 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 what's this, skimmer? Come back here, come back here. There we go. There we go, skimmer bream. That was 100%, even I'm surprised, and I'm, I've done it myself before, but I know that matchmen do it a lot, that when we did a few films back about the silvers, how to catch silvers and specialise in them, Simon the guy said, don't be afraid to bump that float, just enough to bump the bait on the bottom. And that's exactly what happened. I think these fish are eating the corn, almost, there it goes again. It's just, sometimes you see the float, instead of going under, it just goes along like that and it's still a bite. I'll bump it once. I've moved it, maybe, that much, that's all I've moved it. Missed it. So, I get a piece of bed flake. I just bend it and pinch it a bit tighter around the eye of the hook or the shank. I think I dip it once, I want to make sure it sinks. I just swing it out there slowly. I thought in fairness that I would get a lot more bubbles out there. I think I would have I would have got more bubbles. <clears throat> Possibly with maggots and fishing with the regular feed, the course four mil or two mil pellets are fine about it. you probably would get more fish feeding. One bump. See if it works. Here he goes. Come on. Oh what is this? This is another F1. Another one. I'll tell you, you can see why they do match fishing here because these guys will wheel these in and out on a pole into their keep net. So that's bread there. I'm going to try bread again. So they have bread, they have corn. Absolutely sure they'd nail maggots, but it's supermarket bait. So it cost me, I think, 40p for the loaf. And I'm probably going to get through 50 pence with the corn. Now let's just try it over that swim. Mm. 
on again. Oh, this one's going better, guys. This one is going pretty well. There's bread on there and there. And one thing they say with these F1s, they feed right through the winter as well. And that's why they like a match fishing. And they're good scrappers. This one certainly is. For a little fish, but look, I'm on a light rod. Don't get me wrong, I'm on a light rod. Barbless hook, straight out, fish straight back. I'm going to throw bread down this left hand corner. Probably in fairness, we'll go back to corn. It's just a slightly quicker bait to work with, get in and out. If I was fishing in a match, I probably would stay on corn. There goes the float, and there's the fish. I would say it's taking taking minutes, people, just minutes to get a bite. Can you imagine if I was a matchman feeding this regularly? They are only small fish, I know, but it's fun, isn't it? Hey, look, imagine youngsters coming here to learn how to fish. It'd be worth them going into a match just to see if they could pick up some techniques off the matchman. So, a little bit of forethought would have saved me mushing up the bread but I can still put a few slices in there in the landing net let it soak in the water mush it like this and at least I've got a little bit of loose feed ground bait to uh, hopefully get fish moving always take a loaf of bread with me wherever I go follow up with a little pinch of corn Can't get better value than sweet corn. And then, hopefully, he says, using his new clean handkerchief, wife will be pleased. There must be an airstrip or something here, because just constant small aeroplanes going. If I fish the other bigger lakes, it's constant traffic drone of the M4. Oh, what I have noticed is that there is, I'll wait for this plane to go there. What I have noticed, <clears throat> and I'm no matchman obviously as you gathered, it's dead handy just not keep winding in and winding out. It's a bit like the matchman who have a pole, they know that fixed length. So I now know on 13 feet long rod, if I want to get say 12 feet out, I just leave a little bit of a drop and I can swing it. I don't have to keep opening the bail arm, casting out, closing the bail arm, all those things just save time. Here it goes, and I missed it. So, here's my length, look, match was 13 feet, so I get my depth, or length, look, swing it out, and then, well, I could wind one turn, half a turn, I'm right bang in contact with the float, almost, not directly like a pole fisherman has the float here and top of his poles there, I'm away from it, but at least I'm in direct contact if I was in a match, I could start swinging fish in a lot easier if they're small. I haven't got to worry about opening the bail arm, casting out, winding back in. There we go. And I bump it. I just bumped it once. There's the float, just dip, tiny little dips. And it's, oh, a little bit keen on that one. I should have let the float sail away as they call it. So I've got my length there, swing out straight in the swim and I'm constantly going to be able to fish that bait in the same area. Move it about a little bit side to side. My god how many planes are coming over? It's like the Second World War airfield, big in Hill in Kent. Not sensible for me to fish on my hands like this, as comfortable as it may be, because I've got to go to there to get my hand on the rod before I can pick it up. Just going to move it over a little bit. Don't seem to be on this inside corner so much. I like that one down there. They seem to like that by the edge of the weed. I think they just feel a little bit more confident alongside that weed there. 
don't think it's growing on the bottom, I think it's just weed that's growing in the margins. In fact, we'll try it to go a little bit further. Let's try there. The last couple of times I have tried down there, it hasn't been too long before I got a bite. As you'll notice there, I think it's the edge of that weed. Here he comes. This is sort of crucial look about this one, but get him. Get him in quick before another plane comes. And there he is, you see. Nice little fish. Well, I'm over by the weed again, down the side there, people. And definitely, definitely feels like a bigger fish altogether. Single grain of sweet corn. Not huge, but bigger than we've been getting. I lost my waggler float up a tree. Cast, pew! A famous waggler float is up there somewhere. So I'm using, wait for this, a stick float. The river, I'll show you in a minute when this helicopter goes over. Now it's a little bit bigger, not really much bigger, but a step in the right direction anyway. A regular stick float there. Top and bottom end, it's fixed. A couple of BB down the line, about a number 10. And a barbless hook there, size 10, I think it was. Might even be a 12, probably a 12. Looks small, might be smaller than that. And definitely drying over there. I'll tell you what I can see, you can't see it from there because I've got the wrong camera lens. But it's milky, it goes, it, it's like I can tell this fish feeding on the bottom. Look, 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 look. There's fish feeding, ah, oh, I lost him. There's definitely fish feeding on the bottom because I can see there's a milkiness in the water that wasn't there before. There was two or three fish down there then, I think. Try it again. So just getting around right to swing it out. Just ease it into position there. Then I just sort of, just relax a line, but I'm close to it. I generally pull too fast, to be honest. I find the faster the bite, that could be a better fish. The faster the bite, the faster you strike, which is not the way to do it. I think this is a good fish, guys. Whoa. Hang on a minute. It's bigger than the, uh, <clears throat> bigger than the last one. Oh, and he's off. How wonderful. Can you imagine that if you're in a match? Five minutes, five minutes from the whistle blowing, and that was your winning fish. Must be pretty frustrating. I'm going to come back in the same place. So I can see bubbles there all over. Float settled. Smith. Is he round there somewhere behind the rushes? Got a bite going left. It's dragging the float slowly. It indicates possibly a small fish. Let's just raise that rod right top, move it a bit. Thing is with using bread flake on the bottom, probably best not to bump it too much because it's soft, it will come off the hook. A sweet corn, maggots, worms, anything that's on the hook is hard, not hard but firm. You can bump, but um, bread flake, perhaps not wise. Come on, fish. There he is. The float didn't even go under that time. It just went to one side. Fish on move then. I missed him, whatever happened. I'll try a little bit smaller bread flake this time. I think I've got a bit of fish on this time, boys. I've got to watch over there. Well, it definitely has got to be a different type of fish here. This is not 
eight ounces. Oh dear. Oh dear. What is this? He's over there. I'll whacked over as far as I can get on the rod. He's in some sort of snag, which is lovely. Lovely. I really appreciate it. All that fishing, is he going to kick out? It appears not. What sort of a snag has he gone into? Oh, I think he might be out. Might be out. Might be out. Standing up to play this one, people. He's going to go for the rushes. He's going to get the rushes. He's going to ping me. No. Oh, yeah. Nice carp. Nice carp. Nice carp. This is more like it. This is more Uncle Graham's stamp. Not big, but com comparative. Oh, his rod's whacked over. If the hook pings, it pings. I've got no choice. I want to go catfishing. Get this match lake done. Come on, come on, baby. Holy cow, that rod's buckled. That rod is buckled big time. Is it just gonna roll over? Come on. Sometimes you get really annoyed. I've got tangle on the float people as well. Oh yeah, that's a different. This one's a different stamp. Try and turn him over. Here come the planes, helicopters, planes, bombers, good lord. It's like Heathrow Airport. No, nope, he's not ready. I feel a ping coming, guys. I feel a ping coming. There's a jet, a helicopter and a light aircraft all over the top of me up there. Talk about racket. Come on, baby, come on, baby, come on, baby. Just be kind, be kind to me. I'm not being kind to this rod. It just won't give up. Oh my God, come on. Fighting it's like a 25 pounder. I think I got it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah. He's coughing all of the bread up that I've been throwing in. Nice, no, wow, he's way bigger than I thought, way bigger. Look at that. Way bigger than I thought. Where's he hooked? Just in the corner. Hooks out. Check that one out, people. There's a bread he's coughed up. I haven't thrown that in. That wasn't already in the net. He's coughed that up, so he's gone around scoffing all my bread. Beauty. This guy should be a match-winning carp, as far as I'm concerned. Look at that one. Six is seven to eight, six, maybe seven. Two will be pleased to catch a 10 shot size. That's a great fish. One last look. Probably full of Uncle Graham's bread and corn. Yeah, I'll tell you, he's every bit of seven pound or so, that one. He's keen to go. Him get his breath, breath back. Gone. Well, what a great trip. I've only, I've only been going two hours. I'll have a little five minutes more and then I'm definitely going to pack up. I'm going to go just over the back here and have a go in the uh, catfish lake because I have got some lunch and meat and they tell me that is the bait of the day there. Well, I didn't think I'd do very good here to be honest, but I don't think it matters which swim you go to. There's obviously going to be plenty of fish. Actually, bouncing between corn and bread and uh, it doesn't all, all seem all that you know much difference between it but what I have got now <laughs> is because I'm not a matchman I've got sidetracked by seeing fish move and just dropping bits of corn almost in their faces and it sinks right down and they must follow it down because I, I see their heads go down like this so I'm pretty sure they're following it down most of them don't take it but occasionally one or two do oh dear I don't know what to say but anglers and danglers they seem to follow it down not a big fish like last time but look look at the bend in the rod people it's a match rod basically a stick float this is an F1 the other one I think was a proper carp I think I've had 
was about 30 odd pounds of fish, I should think. I've only been here a couple of hours. Basically this size with the odd large one thrown in to spice it up. But look, for matchmen, they're loving all these, aren't they? Pound fish at a go, everyone's a pound fish. Hits 40 of those, maybe three quarters of a pound. Doesn't take long to build a weight, especially if you can get them concentrated. But of course now, if I'm seeing fish move, it's getting late afternoon, I'm looking all over the place. I'm not concentrating on that one swim, but then, hey ho, I'm not a matchman. Couple more casts. I've got to time it for the catfish. There might be a chance of finishing off with a cat. Let's go back and try that swim just over there. I'm, I'm tied between, or drawn between, casting towards patches of bubbles and or shapes moving, or concentrate on the one spot, and of course I like visual fishing, so if it's moving, I'm probably gonna have a go for it. Go back in the main swim. You don't know what's on the bottom now, later in the day. My boy's gonna pack up. That's a stick float that did damage there. So I've moved from the match lake, which is just over there. Wait for this, Mick was telling me just now, the owner was talking to him and he said they had 120 pounds top weight, one of the top winning weights and two others at 90, can you believe? From those tiny section pegs, that's a huge number of fish. But I'm here on his main lake, which you can see here. Can I have a go for a try catch? Look, just one catfish. He did say they're coming out. The main thing is he said, they're still coming out on lunch and meat. Now you can't lose feed here. It's just the bait only, the hook bait only. And they tell me like the edges, the margins, the corners are the hangout places for the catfish. And I wonder if they go up and down the edge of the bank, I don't know. So I'm gonna put a couple couple out there and I've never done any good casting in the middle, I have to say. Still, gotta get a go, haven't we? Gotta be in it to win it. Let me just show you how I've rigged this up. Well, right, I've got my cube here. I've got my cube of lunch and meat, quite a longish cube, okay? Let's put that down. First off, I get myself a piece of fishing line. I t already tied a knot in the end of it, and to that I'm going to do a sliding lock, just a sliding loop like that. Okay, and I get myself, wait for this, you're going to like this one, a very small sliver, I've got to get the right size, of twig here. Hopefully you guys might be able to see this. So. Here we go, I'm going to tie my sliding loop just in here, just like that. That goes around the end of my twig here. I put it all tight, you, you might see it, you might not. Put it all tight like this, okay, so I've effectively got that little T piece there, can you see that? There's the line. What about that much line? snip any surplus off and drop it in your tackle box. There's no need to leave line laying around. Then, I take my baiting needle, I slide it through the center. You can see it's got, just so people know, it's got a little hook on the end there. A nice stainless shaft. I'm gonna push it right through the middle of the meat. It comes out the other end. I make a loop in the line, put it in the hook bend here, and then pull that loop all the way through the luncheon meat. Watch, here comes the tag end, what we call the tag end. I put my baiting needle back in the box, it's really easy to lose. And then this piece of twig here, when you pull a line down like that, just rest across the meat so that doesn't you can't bury the hook in there, you're gonna miss your catfish. You want the hook exposed. Then this is my way of doing it, okay? Well, I look like a carp down there moving, people. I get my hook. And this is the way I do it. I just half hitch it on like this. I'm hoping you people can see this. Just half hitch it on. So that way you can put the hook close to it here, away from it, wherever you fancy. I'm gonna get it just clear, go around a couple of times, and then I go around the main line, half hitching that to the shank, the bend of the hook twice. I 
again, Snip. Oh, I can't get away from them, can I? I just cannot get away from the aeroplanes. Tagging goes back in my tackle box to go in the rubbish bin later. That now can be cast quite away because the impact is being taken by that piece of twig there. And when you strike the hook point here, uh, it's nice and clear. Just resting in the bend there. I've got one treble A shot there just to hold it and sink it to the bottom. I'm going to lob it up in the corner. And fingers crossed, we might get a take. So I've got two baits quite close to the other. One's up by this tree, and the other one's just out from it. It's a gamble. I've got six o'clock, probably give it two and a half hours, and I can have a cook up here and have my bacon and eggs. The top came off my flask, so I haven't had a drink all day. That drag's not good enough. Okay. I'm gonna sink the line. Put the good old plastic washing out bottle top over the line. That's tight. Check that, tune that down. I just bump it barely once. I'm fishing, boys, to see you know with quite a short drop there. And not using the bait runner either in the back, just using the reel straight on the drag. Just take a look at this reel. I think it's 40 years old. It's got 20 pound line on it, but it's a very, very old diver has never let me down, got many fish on it. Doesn't have to be fancy to catch fish as long as it's functional. And that's the two Fs you want. Functional, but not fancy. So I've got this fish hooked up on a waggler float, cast way out. Seen some good fish moving in there. I don't think it's an enormous fish, but I have seen some really big ones, I think early on. I've got to drop the mic a second. I don't think I'm going to get long enough lead on this to get you any action shots. I hope you don't go over the catfish line. Looks like a common carp, I think. If we get him in, that's going to be a major result. Yeah, he's in. Let's get him on the map. Might be the only chance tonight to get to show you a fish, but here we go. If he doesn't leap all over the camera bag. That's a nice common <clears> throat scorn because I've had no water for 12 hours. <laughs> Let's get that back. That was a bonus fish for sure. Well, please don't carp. Nothing else has come, boys. So it's time for this. Hey, you know what these two mean, don't you? That's right. Din dins. Bacon and eggs. Sizzling away. Just a point of interest. That's the 19th of May 2018 and it's still going. That's because I burn it low and keep it hot and don't go wasting gas. There we go, who's going to do the washing up tonight then?
No bites for a while, please. Mm. You really can't beat cooking out in the open. Well, I had a bit of luck there. I had a nice big fish come up right in front of me. Absolutely, just literally down here. Just saw the shape moving through the margins. And by luck would have it, I'd only just cast out my uh, my bait so I could wind it in really slowly. I actually watched him. Didn't even see the float go. I just saw his mouth close around it. This is quite a nice carp, this one. Let's hope the camera's in the battery holdout. I've already dropped one lot. This is a nice fish, he might even. I think this is a double figure fish. I think this, I think this one is a big fish, guys. Amazing, came right in. I just saw a, a swirl in the margins. We, I thought I'd spooked him. Come on, fish. I said, this is a good fish. I'm going back one as well, just in case. This is a nice one. This is fish of the day, 100%, if I get it in. Nothing on the catfish rods, but listen. <laughs> this fish will make up for it. Can't put any more on it, I'm only on an even rod. Heavy line though. Oh yeah. That's a beauty. Holy Christ, that is a big one. <laughs> this one is a lump. Oh my god. Hook's falling out. How lucky was that people? This thing is a boily eating balloon, I should think. Gonna have to weigh that one, boys. I reckon that's, that's definitely a double, see him? But there it is, 19 pound, three ounces. Great big balloon of a carp. Oh, there we go, people. I think the camera's still running. That's 19 pounds, three ounces. What a cracking jack fell, I mean, man. Didn't expect that, it just literally swam past the front of my swim and I just went on the float in and just lowered it on him. That is a nice lump of a fish. God. Well I just had an epic battle with this carp. Last knock is a great big old lump of this lake. What a beauty, I've got to weigh it. I think it should be the other side of 14 pounds. Let's get the scales back out. Don't often see me use the scales twice. Don't often see me use the scales once. I was only going on that match lake. Gonna kill a couple of hours here. Yeah. Let's have a little looky. That's got to be over 14. It is 16. 66, 64. We're calling it 16.9. Wow, what a great fish. Man alive, a 19 and a 16. Just goes to show you, there are some incredibly big lumps in here. So we didn't get any of the action of that one, boys, but. 16.9 on an Avon rod. Let's see if I can get him to. There we go. I'm going to get covered in it. It's the worst, best jumper. It's about to go out for Sunday. Hopefully, you can see this. It's not very good in the dark, this camera. But it's a good fish. Nice carp. Epic battle right across the other side of the lake. Wow. Not bad after a match session, was it? Let's get it back. Right on, catfish people. 
I've seen a few caught, maybe not many considering the number of anglers, but I've had a pretty epic one on that match lake. Nice fish out of there. And I, I didn't really want to come this afternoon. It was so late, I thought, should I pack up? But as you can see, all the guys, one, two, three, four, five guys over on the island. Another three over here. So there's another one, two, three. And there's probably some guys on the lakes over there as well. But pleased with that. So it's 19, whatever it was, you saw it, 19, something, 16, nine. Unbelievable fishing. Well, have to come back to Pondwood, I think. Some big old carp in there. No, I don't think anybody fishes for them. I think they all go for the catfish. <laughs>